6 o'clock hour of sunrise here on a Tuesday morning. Rodney Hill is back in the mix after a yeah. four-day weekend. Which was great. I highly recommend it, um, <laughs> by the way. Those are hard to come by sometimes. I'll start tomorrow. <laughs> Things have shifted, though, weather-wise, Rob, because yeah. you're definitely going to feel the uh, the fall yeah. season, if you will, starting today yeah. and tomorrow. So, so one thing, it was, was that last Thursday? It was 102. I think it was mm -hmm. Thursday. And every single day since then has been down. Yesterday was 83. Today, 78. So that trend of more pleasant weather continuing on a Tuesday. Partly cloudy skies out there right now. Uh, you can see a little bit of the blue as we have the iris opened up on the Wells Fargo Tower well before sun up, of course, at this hour. 60 is the uh, number out the door. A lot of you are in the 50s, uh, and this is a nice day. Mostly sunny to partly cloudy, and if anything, cloudiness increasing later today. I have a 78 for a high at 5 o'clock. Futurecast shows rain showers in Portland possible as soon as 9 to 10 o'clock this evening. We still expect heavy showers tomorrow. For now, here's Chris. Rod, if you were watching us last hour, we were on the scene of a crash on West Burnside. I'm here to tell you West Burnside has reopened between Tishner and McClay. So that crash is cleared. Over on the east side, there's I-205, your southbound drive over the Glen Jackson. That looks pretty good. I-5 south of town. Earlier road work in the Twilliger curves. That has cleared as well. So I do want to let you know about this. An early heads up starting tomorrow. And for the next two weeks, the I-405 northbound exit to 4th Avenue is going to be closed. Peabot is going to be <laughs> you know, this road that is littered with potholes. Peabot is going to be doing a curb to curb paving job. And to do that, they're going to have to close the 4th Avenue exit tomorrow for two weeks. Just giving you the early heads up on that, guys. Thank you, Chris. And if things had gone a little bit differently one way or the other, it could be a different outcome. Our top story here at six, two 18 year olds are behind bars after police say they found the pair outside Vancouver's Mountain View High School with loaded guns. And according to police, it all started with an online threat that was reported by a student. Ashley Graham joins us live from the high school this morning with more on what happened. Ashley. Drew, China, good morning. Vancouver police say that this all started when a student saw a post on Snapchat and they reported it. That post contained a threat to confront a student after class. Two patrol officers showed up at Mountain View High and they saw two people approaching the school. Both were detained and uh, found to be carrying loaded guns. Officers arrested McKay Parker and Xavier Johnson. Both are 18. Neither is a student in the Evergreen School District. Vancouver police says everyone involved did their part in response and likely saved lives. The officers were there at the right time and the student did the right thing at the right time and everyone is going home safe tonight. Well, both suspects are now in the Clark County Jail. They face several charges, including attempted assault and unlawful possession of a firearm. Fortunately, everyone was OK. No one was injured. Police believe there are no other suspects. Drew, China. Ashley Graham's reporting live for us this morning. Thank you, Ashley. Students were allowed to go back inside Appalachia High School for the first time yesterday since last week's deadly mass shooting in Georgia. The school's principal permitted students to get their belongings. We still don't know when classes will resume for Appalachia High students, but the rest of the district will return to class today. Tonight is a long-awaited presidential debate between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. That debate will air live from Philadelphia right here on KGW and NBC, but it is hosted and moderated by ABC News. Tonight, we'll have a half hour of KGW News at 4, followed by NBC Nightly News at 4.30. Then NBC's special coverage of the debate begins at 5 o'clock our time with Harris and Trump set to square off at 6. Then stick around after the debate for a special edition of KGW News at about 8. Also, immediately following the presidential debate, the candidates for Washington governor will face off. Democrat Bob Ferguson will be debating Republican Dave Reichert starting at 8. You can watch that live on KGW.com or on our streaming app, KGW+. Vancouver City Council is holding another community forum here in a couple of weeks. These forums happen throughout the year, giving community members the opportunity to talk to council members directly. You don't have to RSVP or register to attend. All the details are up there on your screen. This next forum is happening on Monday, September 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Meanwhile, Portland City Council candidates are going to their own forums. United for Portland is hosting them, and attendance is mandatory for any candidate who hopes to win an endorsement. The group says it's using these forums to train candidates on the city's issues using nonpartisan experts. There is currently 19 people running for Portland mayor and 98 others who are vying for one of 12 city council seats. 
One of the leading candidates in the race to become Portland's next mayor is reportedly facing questions over their history of parking and traffic tickets and having their license suspended a half a dozen times. According to the Oregonian, City Commissioner Carmen Rubio has built up more than 150 parking and traffic violations over the last 20 years, and at least 100 of them were sent to a collection agency. Rubio also reportedly had her license suspended six times for failing to appear in court to pay these tickets. The Oregonian also found most of the infractions happened between 2009 and 2020. That's the year Rubio was elected as a city commissioner. And the paper also reports she was fined two different times for failing to update her vehicle registration, once in 2022 and then again just last year. In a statement, Rubio said, quote, I've never hid the fact that in my younger years, I put my family, financial and career obligations first. I now know and try very hard to never put my personal life on the back burner, even when times are tough. She went on to say that experiences, quote, make me a better leader because I have greater empathy for people who've gone through similar things. Rubio's team also told us her vehicle registrations are up to date and all tickets are paid. Retiring Oregon Congressman Earl Blumenauer will take up a job with Portland State University when he retires at the end of his current term. He's going to have two roles at PSU, Senior Fellow and Special Advisor to the President and Presidential Fellow at PSU's Institute for Portland Metropolitan Studies. In both of these roles will help address some of Portland's most pressing challenges like downtown revitalization. And he'll also help connect faculty and students with the region's leaders in law and policymakers. Congressman Blumenauer will officially begin his Portland state role on January 3rd of next year. The Portland Timbers have kicked off their 13th annual Stand Together Week, an initiative to start local nonprofits and volunteer opportunities. Yesterday, Timber staff and players helped prepare food boxes for the Portland Police's Sunshine Division, which provides emergency groceries for Portland families. I feel great, you know, give uh, something back to the community. I think it's special and the uh, uh, to have this program in the club, I mean, it's, it's mean a lot for, for me as a player for community too. You can learn more about the initiative and volunteer opportunities on the Timbers website. All right, your time now is 6.08. Rod, I feel like five days ago it was 102, and now it's a high of like 70s and 60s. Yeah. Well, you are feeling exactly correct, by the way. <laughs> I'm going 78 out there today, but enough rain in the area that tomorrow's high will be held in the 60s. Now, again, this morning, we're great. You have no weather issues whatsoever. It's generally partly cloudy across much of the state. We still have a hazy wildfire smoke and, in fact, poor air quality numbers from Deschutes County and also out across parts of eastern Oregon. Of course, yesterday, if you remember, we had the deep blue sky over Portland, a sign that the smoke has exited areas um, west of the Cascades. And that'd be the case again today. We are tracking this weather maker and it's a pretty good maker of weather, if you will. Futurecast shows rain could be arriving up around Astoria and Long Beach as soon as five o'clock tonight. And this initial band could hold together and bring some rain through southwest Washington and Portland around nine or 10 o'clock this evening. And then overnight tonight into tomorrow morning, look at this. Heavy rain uh, areas moving through. It could be some thunder and lightning mixed with the downpours. A very active morning of your Wednesday with that thunderstorm threat and the heavy downpours. As you go into the afternoon, things gradually start to wind down. Scattered showers become more widely scattered and weaker. And then the rain chance pretty much ends outside of a trace of moisture going into Thursday morning. Here we are right now. Pretty shot right from the Wells Fargo Tower looking off to the northeast this morning. We're at 60 degrees. Quick look at your current numbers where they have been. We're mainly 50s, 55 in Happy Valley and Sherwood and Forest Grove, McMinnville also and Corvallis also at 55 degrees. Forecast numbers today, 80s out east, still smoky at times. Central Oregon, hazy sun, 70 to 80 degrees up and down I-5. Seven day forecast, 78 today for a nice one. Only in the 60s tomorrow, heavy showers, maybe some thunder mixed in. And then mainly dry Thursday, Friday all dry. And then really, I think Saturday, Sunday, Monday potentially are in this dry, pleasant days. But there will be a scattered shower chance that I'm watching for now. And that is your update.